So Logic Pro 11 just dropped, and I wanna start a whole new series called Radium Studio Sessions to give you guys more insight on production, writing songs, starting songs, using Logic Pro, Pro Tools, or any other DAW. But this video is gonna be focused on Logic Pro 11 workflow tips on starting your first song. Let's dive right in. This is gonna be a lot of fun, and I hope you guys get a lot out of the video. And if you do, subscribe to the channel. When you first open Logic Pro 11, you're greeted with this screen here. And on the left here, you have new project, recent, live loop grids, tutorials, demo projects, project templates, and my projects, right? So my templates. But I wanna start from scratch with you guys to show you exactly how I would start a song using the new features in Logic Pro. Now, the next thing we get is to create a new track. You have to have a track in Logic, and I'm just going to do a bass player. You can go pop rock, retro rock, even modern Motown sounds kind of cool. Let's try that out. The default chord progression for new regions, I'll show you exactly what that means. Now, we create the track, and automatically we get an eight bar loop of some sort of bass. It's going to start with something. So at the bottom, you can see the bass player is the modern Motown, and that's what we picked as our preset right when we started. And what that gives us is a channel strip here with the bass, and the bass bass is actually a really cool new instrument in Logic Pro 11 that I am blown away by. So what we get here is we get a bunch of options for different basses. So we have classic 60s, which is like a Hofner style. Obviously, the classic is like a Fender P bass. Uh, we have rock, which is going to be a, like a uh, Rickenbacker. And then we have the session bass, which is I don't know what that is. It might be a Jaguar or Yamaha style bass. I'm not really sure. Modern. Again, we have like a PV or something here. And then American Upright, which which is an upright bass. So we're gonna go with classic because that's what it's giving us for the Motown sound, a P bass. You really can't go wrong. The next step I would take is to decide what the chord progression would be. So now let's go to our chord progression here. And this is really where these new features with Logic really shine. And it's a lot of fun because sometimes you just wanna start a song and you don't wanna be thinking and like, oh, what's the chords and try to figure stuff out, right? So let's just let the AI kind of give us something from a chord progression. And the simplest way to do this is if you click on the actual chord progression here, you can right click and go to chord progression and you can change any sort of chord progression here. I can also double click this and it'll open up the chord diagram box, that, you know, so you can really dive into this. So if you want to get a little bit more funky than having these major minor chords, you can do sevens, add nines, add elevens. So this is really cool. And you can also even change the inversion of the chord, which is super useful when you're doing voice leading and you want something to be really pop and not move too much and not be clunky. So you can change it here with the bass note. Right now we're working on a bass, so I don't really wanna worry about that too much. Um, but I'm going to just change the chord progression completely. I'm gonna go to chord progression, four, one, six, five. Now we have a D, A, F sharp minor, E, D, A, F sharp minor, E. So now we have a progression. Let's check it out and hear it on the bass. So right away, that bass sounds really nice to me. You can also dial in different stuff with the bass. The chord rhythm is really cool because if you add a drum pattern or something and you want the bass to follow and pocket to a drum from splice or something, right? Which we can do right now. Let's try it. Because that loop right there has such a vibe and so much swing to it, that's what I'm gonna use so I can demonstrate exactly how this bass works. So check this out. I'll drag and drop this directly into Logic. And as you can see, it's at 115, so it fits perfectly in the project. And then I'm just gonna loop this. Let's double click on the bass, and I go to this chord rhythm, and I do this follow, and I can say, let's follow the track of the drums. And let's check out what it did here. So you automatically have now the bass player following the drums. And it also pockets it better. It pockets it with the swing of the drums. And if you zoom in on the drum loop itself, you can see that it's pretty swung. You know, it's ahead of the beat here. You have the downbeat. It's ahead of the beat here quite a bit. So it's rushing quite a bit. And if we have this bass start to lock in on that rushing, it pockets better. So without that, without the bass following the drums, you have this bass note kind of landing here, but the snare landing ahead of it 
which is going to sound kind of funky and flimsy and not really that great. So I go back here and have it follow the drums. And then we can change the complexity, the intensity. But I also mess with the melody. Do I want it to play just the root notes of the chords in the chord track? Or do I want it to play some notes of those chords? So some notes going to give you more funk, more Motown, more movement. Another thing, octaves, right? Do you want it to jump octaves? Do you want it to go like boop, boop, boop? Boop, boop, you know? Disco obviously is gonna boop, beep, boop, beep, boop, beep, boop, beep, boop, beep. So that's where you wanna maybe do jumping octaves. And then the phrasing, this is really important, short, medium, or long. With the short, you're gonna get a lot more funk, more staccato. With long, you're gonna get more held out notes. And you could use that for maybe pre-choruses or bridges, things like that. For medium, it's kind of a happy medium obviously, right? Extra schmedium. And then the last thing is that I use and mess with quite a bit is the fill amount. So this is like the turnarounds, the stuff you see up here, like in these little spots where it's like, you know what I mean? And then there's complexity of those fills as well. So watch what happens with these fill parts, any part where it starts to run. Yeah, you hear that? Boop, 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 boop. Like it's doing some crazy stuff, but I can take the fill amount to, down as well. So it's not doing as many fills and it's more pocketed, but then when it does do a fill, it's gonna be pretty complex. You know, we're gonna go into like the seventh of the chord or whatever, right? So let's do less fill amount. We'll do, you know, medium fill complexity. And then we'll take the complexity overall down a little bit and the intensity up a little bit. So I'm just like paying attention to how it's shifting and changing as I do this. And you can see it's like in real time, it gives you feedback right away. We're getting close here already to wanting to cut some vocals on this. So now we have our drums, we have a bass line, we got some Motown stuff going. But the next thing I wanna show you is the keys track. So we're gonna make a new track here, a session player, and we'll do the keyboard player. So let's stick with a simple pad, let's create. And you can see right away, it opens up the retro synth. So the retro synth may or may not work for what you're trying to do. Instead of the retro synth, I'm gonna just stick with a soul organ though, so we can stick into that uh, Motown vibe. As you can see, it just kind of made block chords around the D, A, F sharp minor, etc. So let's just hear this in the mix. So we already have something that we can sketch with. Hopefully you guys are getting this and this is like really fun for you because for me, this is like such an easy, fun way to sketch a song start. And if you want to, you can replace it later. You can get a guitar player to play over the top. You can sing and write right on top and put out your track really quickly. And it's just a really good writing tool. And I wanted to share this stuff with you guys because I've been really utilizing the bass player track especially. Now, what if we want that organ to play a little bit more, you know, not so padded out? We'll double click on the organ and we can go to the voicing here. We can go to the intensity. We can mess with a whole lot of stuff. But um, the first thing I'm gonna do is change the keyboard player from the simple pad to something different. Now, before I do that, this is really, really important. And hopefully you're watching and paying attention and taking notes here. Uh, but if I just change the keyboard player, it's gonna give me a whole new preset and probably change my channel strip as well. So it's gonna take away that vintage B3 that I've been working for. So I'm gonna duplicate the track, Command D, and now I'm going to mess with this so I can drag it down. So I'm gonna click here and I'm gonna to go to broken chords or let's do block chords. Now you can see it changed it right away to a piano. So this is really important and I kind of messed this up before where I dialed in the sound and then I was like, change it and then I'm like, what the hell? Why did I get a completely, now I have a piano player? I don't want that, right? Like I've been dialing in that organ. So just something to pay attention to. But now I have that, I can just option drag it down and mute that vintage upright and listen to it on the soul organ. Now, 
now it's pretty obvious that that was like that's meant for a piano because it's like going dot 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 right you can see steady eighth is eighths is on as well so if i turn that off we get rid of that dot 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 eighth note steady right and then on the track let's have it follow drums too see what it did it put in like these little ghost notes and stuff and runs in there so let's hear this Now here's where it gets really fun, right? And the last thing I'm gonna show you in this video is I don't like this soul organ maybe. I'm like, I don't really think that's the right instrument. So let's use my own instruments, my third party plugins that I have. So maybe you got the Arturia bundle or you have a bunch of synths like I do because you're crackhead. <laughs> Cause I got way too many synths, but uh, I'll go to cradle audio and I can go, Hey, I like the prints. I want to get a little bit more funky with this. And I want to have like an analog synth kind of sound, right? I'll just like kind of flip through some of these. So I have that open, but how do I, how do I do that? Right? Like what, what do we do here? Well, you can take this and you can option drag it down and then you can right click it and you can say convert to MIDI region. And what that will do is convert the MIDI region and also give you the chord names, which is really, really cool, burned right into the MIDI region. Sometimes there's other stuff in there that doesn't really make sense. So you got to double click on that MIDI or command six in logic will open up your MIDI region uh, where you can actually like see the whole editor, right? And then I can really zoom in and see what's going on. And you can see there's velocity and all that stuff. But in here, you can also see any automation stuff, MIDI automation that's burned in. And right here, you can see there's a sustain. So there's a sustain pedal uh, automation like put into the MIDI. And then there's also note velocity here. So that's something to pay attention to because if you're holding down a sustain pedal and it's something you don't want on a synth, then you can just delete this stuff. So simple simple to do, and hopefully this will help you if you run into this problem. But just literally select all of this and then hit delete. And you can also just take that down to zero. Okay, so that's very, very uh, important that you check that out because the MIDI data in the AI stuff and with the keyboard player and everything is going to give you a bunch of different stuff, especially when it's playing piano because it just like holds out the the pedal okay so now let's get out of the the midi editor here for midi you can just hit x or p when you're in the piano roll you just hit p that opens up the piano roll um, if you want to open up the mixer you hit x x x open and close uh, mixer if you want to open up the audio editor window hit w but obviously you have to select audio so if you hit w you open up your audio editor so just a couple little key commands and tips to help you guys going in uh, Logic Pro. Now we got this in MIDI. Let's check this out with this sound, which is going to be the Cradle Audio Prints. And then we can flip through some presets and kind of dial something a little bit cooler in. great way to start a song and hopefully that's what you got out of this video is how to start a song in logic pro 11 using these new tools and if you guys got anything out of the video please drop some love share the show i want to grow a community here and i want to make sure that it's a bunch of people that really like music want to learn music want to like get better at production and all that stuff so there are some operating system requirements to upgrade to logic pro 11 just make sure you check that out on the app store and everything and make sure that you're up to date so you can update to these new features and i hope you guys got a lot out of the video i'll see you guys next time. Peace.